Hi guys, welcome to the Funny Thing Is podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Birch, where every week I bring you a guest who shares something traumatic that's happened to them, the medicine they took to get over it, and the funniest thing they learned. Today is no exception, and I am so excited to introduce a good friend of mine who I've known since I was 15. It's been a long time. The hilariously talented Chris Porter. Yay! Cue an applause. 15? Uh, you were, yeah. Yeah. You're uh, three uh, years older? Maybe? I don't know. Okay. No, was I already doing comedy? You had just, well, you performed at my 18th, like I was 18, so it was a graduation okay. party. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I really don't and know. Then I, I just feel like you've always been there. Yeah. Like same. an angel on my shoulder. Same. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> you were, oh, that's a question I have. So I went to Bishop Miege, mm -hmm. and so did your sister and like your whole family, your mom and everybody, right? My dad didn't. My dad went to North. And right. I think my mom went to North for a short time. Okay. Uh, oh, it was the St. Agnes. I'm thinking of your, your mom, grandma, or yeah, your mom, Saint grandma, Agnes. sister all went to St. Agnes. Yeah, yeah and I think my mom went, and my I know my mom went to Miege. I just don't know if she graduated. But why didn't you go? Because well, you went further we, out, right? We lived out west when I started high school. Oh, that's why. Or started school, for that matter. Okay. I went to a parochial school for six months in first grade. Okay. And then we moved out to the country and my parents at that time didn't have the means to drive me to right. the local whatever Catholic school. So right. the bus. So I ended up going to public school. Okay. And I, I, I really enjoyed it. I went to yeah. a very small school. I went to, I was out in the DeSoto district. Yeah, DeSoto, yeah. So it was great for me. I got to play all the sports. You know, there was, there were, it was a small enough school to where they didn't have cuts and sports and all that yes, stuff. Yes, so everybody got to play. Everybody got it. to play, yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, I don't know if everyone got to play. Everyone got to suit up. Okay, okay. There but you, uh, you had to you had to earn your spot on the team, but for sure. Okay. Uh, but yeah. So, and then literally, I think a month after we, I graduated high school, my parents were like, this is enough of this shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were like, that's enough of that. And we moved into to where you yeah. yeah. Okay. So. And then I remember, um, so I did not smoke. I still don't smoke a lot of weed. Oh, okay. Which is. Don't worry, I'm making up for it. Okay, good, good. You're yeah, doing yeah, my yeah, part. I'm getting good. Your... I had a high school boyfriend named Jimmy, and you were performing at Sanford and Sons. And I think we'd met at like a, you and I were talking at like a family function or something. You're like, oh, I'm performing yeah. this night. And I was like, oh, I'll come. And I, was it 18 and over or 21 and over? It was, that club didn't really care. care. I was going to say, I was like, Especially oh, if you were attractive in the least. That's, I think these are the exact words you said that yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't think I'm old enough to get in. And you're like, it's fine. Yeah, you're hot enough to get in. I, was like, I think were probably my words. We're great. Perfect. Because they, I mean, it was just a den of ne'er-do-wells and sycophants. Yeah, so, that's yeah, yeah, so yeah. we belonged. Um, so we went to go see one of your shows and I came home, I don't know, I think I had like a midnight curfew. And I came home at like 12, 15 or something and I reeked of weed and my dad was so mad and he was like, why do you smell like weed? What is going on? You're in so much trouble. You're, this is not how I raised you, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, I was with Chris Porter and he goes, oh, go to your room, you <laughs> just take a shower. And I was like, what? Yeah. Cause like our dads were friends. Yeah. And so it was like, oh, okay. If he's, I know oh, Chris. Oh, Porter, yeah, that he kid, smokes weed, it's that fine. That kid needs weed. You're the he's only weed. person I could have gotten away with that You're stuff welcome. with. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. You probably just use that excuse for the rest of time. And that's it. Till like, to this day, I'm like, Chris. Why Porter. does your room smell like weed? Chris, Chris just jumped out the window. The window. It's nuts. He, he was just in here. 20 years later. That crazy. dude loves to scale walls for some <laughs> just reason. Just to come inside, smoke weed, and leave. I'm like, nuts. say hello to dad. And he's like, fuck that dude. He's kind of a dick. <laughs> Love you, Larry. Yeah. Oh, L dog. Um, yeah. So that's how we know each other. And then yes. you started. And then you did, uh, I kind of watched your career from afar then, because then you came to L.A., right? Pretty quickly? Yeah, I moved to L.A. in 2005. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and then got very lucky to get on TV within six months of getting out here. Was it six months? I yeah. remember it being fast. I didn't know it was it that was, fast. Uh, so. You're talking Last Comic Standing. Last Comic Standing. Yes. Yeah. So I had met Dave Becky at Mitch Hedberg's funeral, unfortunately. Oh, my God. And, uh, but Mitch's wife, Lynn, was, I had opened for Mitch a bunch. Right. So Lynn was very much like this Chris Porter. He's very funny. He yeah. was, you know, Mitch was, he was one of Mitch's favorites, blah, right. blah, blah. 
And Dave Becky told me when I got into town, he goes, if you ever move to LA, call me. And you know, you take that with a grain of salt. But when right. I moved to town, I was like, I should not not call him. Right, at least try, yeah. And uh, you, he would made true to his word, sent guys out. He was like, when you get a feature spot out here, let me know. And I did, he sent his assistants out and they flipped and they signed me. And then they were like, we, a few months later, they're like, Jesus, this you is should, the best. you should do Last Comic Standing. And I was like, because mm. not only did they want me to do Last Comic Standing, they wanted me to drive to Phoenix to try out. Okay. Because the LA one was just stacked. Right, right. And so, you know, I wasn't making a lot of money at the time. And so driving to Phoenix on my own time was to everything. do a free show it was like, okay. Like, I remember I, I went in and did my audition and then had to wait in the parking lot for like five hours for the show because I didn't have a hotel room. I didn't have anywhere to oh go. My God. So I just hung out in my Lincoln, <gasps> walked to Taco Bell, you know. Yeah. Luckily, it was February, February, I yeah. think. So it was pretty, wasn't super hot. Right. So, yeah, I just hung out and I remember I just, Five hours later, put on my dress shirt and walked back into the club oh and did this God. ridiculously packed show and yeah. had a great time. And then, yeah, and then that's... Was that, that like the one of the warmest crowds ever, I would imagine? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was hard to fail yeah. in front of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And a lot of people did, so... And then you did really, really well. I did, yeah. I got real lucky with Last Comic Standing, and that just, uh, if anything else, kind of solidified me as a headliner for a little bit on the road. Yeah. And then allowed me to pay my bills with comedy. Yeah. Because this was pre-Uber, so that, right. you know, like those jobs weren't available. Right, so, right. Uh, what were you doing to make money? That was anything besides comedy? Or no, what? I was doing stand I was a working stand-up comic when I moved out here. Okay. Like I was a, working the road year-round as a feature, as a middle act. Okay. Which was a struggle, yeah. especially moving out here. You know, your rent goes so up. So expensive. Uh, but then, yeah, so luckily I got Last Comic Standing, and then that, the year after that was amazing. Yeah. But it also kind of skews your perspective a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, this is easy. Yeah. Why yeah, are you people struggling? Yeah, like, yeah. I've, I've been out here six months, and I'm making more money than... Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you don't say that out loud. Right. But you probably, I probably definitely had that attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you're also 26. Ugh. 27 so you and you're making all and i remember a comic going you know spend the money he's like you're not gonna make enough to buy a house yeah so have fun you've lived poor for seven years yeah live rich for a year yeah and i did i've oh, spent all the money and <laughs> had a great time i don't regret any of it yeah uh yeah but you know taking your friends out you know i remember Going out with a bunch of friends and paying the bill because I didn't want to deal with everyone figuring out what they owed. Yeah. Like, it was just annoying. You're like, I'll just take care of it. I'll just Oh, I'll just I love it. it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, those are the best days. Yeah. You get to do that. And now I'm making that kind of money again, but now I'm like, no, fuck it's you. It's mine. No, I'm it's mine. Yeah, mine. yeah, yeah, yeah. I already yeah. did that once. Yeah, yeah. I did one no, round. No, you, you, you get had the next four round. captain and coach, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, favorite barbecue spot in Kansas City? Joe's. Same. The best. Still burnt, best burnt ends I've ever had. And the best pulled pork in town. Oh my God, so good. Yeah. I should tell you I'm now really good friends with the owner. Tell him I said hi. <laughs> tell him. I became randomly through an old bar regular friend of mine. She was like, oh, um, she goes, oh, I have a friend that I met who dabbles in barbecue in Kansas City. I was like, yeah, everybody dabbles in yeah. Kansas City. And she goes, um, what's your favorite one? And I was like, oh, Joe's KC. And she goes, I go, it used to be called Oklahoma Joe's. And she's like, that's hers. And I was like, what? Yeah. And she was like, anyway, she's going to be here. Um, she wants to take you to lunch because my sister got had just gotten married. Yeah. And my sister uh, had her wedding catered by Joe's. Yeah. And so I like sent photos and I was like, look, this is what we had. And she goes, oh, she wants to take you to lunch. So we all go to lunch at the rooftop of the Waldorf Astoria. Okay. Uh, which I've never been. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't belong here. So I like walk in and it's just, she's her name's Joy. She's the coolest chick ever. Oh, I have been there. It's a great little, that's a great restaurant. On top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gorgeous. It's like and the, it's not super expensive no. for being on top of the wall. No, and the view's spectacular. Incredible. It's yeah. crazy. 
And so we're sitting there having, you know, and she's ordering caviar fries. And I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah. we're, sp- we're splitting of this. Oh, great. <laughs> and like the wine, she's like, we'll do middle tier wine. And I'm like, mm, okay. Um, and we end up hitting it off. And I love that she doesn't come from money because there is something like Waldorf story. I'm thinking yeah, you yeah. might not have a lot to talk about. Because you're looking around and you're seeing all these families that, that this is just life for them. No clue. Yeah. I, I rode up on an elevator with two girls who are probably 15, 16 with their service dog and Gucci'd out. Like actually they're in designer. I don't even know what the designer is, but you know, they're designer. I've never heard of them. A 12 year old should not have $1,200 slides. No, that's what, and they had slides. And I was like, what is happening? And they were brag, not bragging. She goes, I think they were friends. And she goes, do you remember when we went to Nantucket? And she goes, which one was that? And she's like the one on the East coast. Yeah. And I was like, what they have no idea the one on the east they just get on their plane but they go they go and they're very vapid there's no depth to them and i was like i don't i would love to have their money but i don't envy that that's their childhood yeah well there's never any uh pain or distress no stakes like everything is everything you just go from your house to your plane yeah. to your other house to your friend's house i also th- everything's great all the time it's great i think the, they're the people that consider their themselves cultured because they travel a lot but they actually yeah. never leave the hotel they never left the hotel no. yeah no and then they, you haven't been to a museum ever yeah you're like well i've had a baguette in france you're like well well it's not the same no i had a baguette at the france part of uh, epcot center <laughs> Same thing. Probably same. Probably I same. probably learned more <laughs> than I, you did. Because I ask questions. Yeah. So we're having lunch. I meet Joy. Great time. And then I real like, she. they used to live in Westwood. And oh, okay. they were just, they had normal jobs or whatever. And then I guess her husband came home one day and he's like, we're going to quit our jobs and we're going to put this barbecue place in this gas station. She was like, no, that's a yeah. terrible idea. My dad knew them front because dad used to competitively do barbecue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm oh, totally f- fucked up that word, competitively barbecued. barbecued. That's a lot. And uh, he knew the Stainies from the from the barbecue days. Oh, really? And he was like, oh, he's going to put it, that'll be great. And then it's really good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so yeah. God bless him. Yeah, it's in, it's still my favorite. And then you get the ones that are like Q39. Q39's bougie barbecue. Yeah. I yeah, like yeah, it. yeah. It's for, it's not... First off, cloth napkins. No, thank you. Yeah, not no, at a barbecue that's place. That's not a real, that's not. No, yeah. And everyone that. talks about their wings. Andy and I went and had their wings. Andy's yeah. my sister, Andy. Yeah. I. And uh, no. Yeah. It's, they're fine. Yeah. I don't know what the hubbub's about. I used to like Arthur Bryant's back in the day. And yeah. now I can't do it. Uh, sleeper is Zarda. I like Zarda. Yeah, Zarda. I know the Zarda family. Or, uh, uh, and then the Gates. Here's Gates just is so national now with the sauces yeah. and stuff. It's like I don't need to go there anymore yeah. and get screamed at. That's what I was gonna say. I don't want to be insulted right when I walk in. It's yeah. a lot. So heavy artillery. I mean, but also if they don't yell at you, you're like, well, that's why. Why are you leaving me out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I get then I get upset. Uh, okay, so that's our Kansas City background. So okay, here's the question that is in line with the podcast. So what is something that happened to you in your life that changed everything? Oh, I got hit in the head with a golf ball. Okay. Uh, and had that brain surgery at seventeen. So, Yikes. yeah, it was pretty intense. Also, uh, did you know I didn't know that about you until you posted it on Instagram like a few years ago? Oh yeah, during the uh, on the anniversary. Well, yeah. you can actually see a lot of the scar here. I like see it now, but yeah. I was also like, I knew you because I'm like, okay, if I was fifteen when I met him, you would have been eighteen. So it would have been. It was after that for sure. So it would have been yeah, after, yeah. but like the fact that I still. It would have been pretty soon after, and I still never knew. That's so crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was... Probably not a leading thing that you introduce people with, but. No, no. You know, it's funny. Most people don't notice the scar. People that do are like fighters, like J- Jason Ellis. Yeah. I walked into his podcast, and he goes, first thing out of his head was, what's that? What happened to your what face? And I was like, literally, literally no one's asked me that. Ever. Yeah. Um, but I'm also, you're also like 6'12". So, like, I feel like sure. I not wouldn't a lot have of seen people. it. Yeah. Well, But yeah, so got hit, uh, played like five more holes. Uh. (laughs) Because I was 17, you know, you just, and growing up in Kansas, you were taught to brush it off and play through it. You were playing with your mom, right? Playing with my mom. Well, Andy wasn't playing, but she was walking around with us. Okay. So uh, I I 
just gotten contacts for my eyes. Okay. And uh, so mom turns around and I'm on the ground doing this. She thinks I'm just messing with my contacts. And she was like, what's wrong? And I was like, I got hit. And she's like, seriously? And I'm like, yeah. And she came over. Oh, she didn't hear it or anything. Mm -mm. This old man comes right, because it was like a dog leg right, which means it kind of turns. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the old man comes around and my mom. Oof. Mm -mm. I rolled her car. I like, no one's made my mom more mad than I have. And maybe my sister. And I've never seen anything like, yeah. she went full like primal gorilla on yeah. this man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, to the point, I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> calm down, calm, calm down. down. I'm down. fine, I'm fine, I'm pretty fine. And, we, you know, but, like, she was like, are you okay? I was like, I'm okay. And, uh, yeah, played a couple more holes. Part of the hole I got hit on. Nope. Amazing. Uh, yeah, okay. it was pretty great. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure I let my mom know all about that. I was like, what up? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so... After about five holes, like started seeing double, the headache started getting worse. Oh, God. Was Went, there a mark? Yeah, it was a pretty big thump, pretty or, big lump. On the side there, okay. And then we got home, and you know, my mom's not a nurse. She's right. in insurance. She was like, I go, I'm gonna go take a nap. She was like, okay. Also, probably not the best idea for mm -hmm. head injuries. Yeah, so let's not do that. Uh, so she's on the phone calling the hospital. I'm calling my friend telling him what happened and he was like you don't sound right and when a 17 year old kid's like hey man yeah something's wrong right uh so i went so i was like all right and at this point the headache was now like exponentially worse right and i couldn't see well and so i, I went to the top of the stairs and i'm like mom i think i need to go to the hospital she's like let's go and I mean, when your kid as a mom now, like when your kid tells you we need to go, they're like, yeah. done. Like, I can't, I couldn't drive fast enough. Yeah, I just remember her holding my hand and just trying to keep me awake. Mm -hmm. And then we got to the hospital and we got to the front desk of the, <laughs> the emergency room. And the lady goes, what's wrong? And I just went, Whoa, and I just threw up all over the oh desk. Oh, my God. And I was like, I got hit in the head. <laughs> she was like, let's go. Oh, that's your ticket back right Oh, now, yeah, that's right an now. express pass. Wow. <laughs> and uh, they took me straight back, got me into CAT scan. And I remember the doctor, and we got real, I got real lucky in the fact that the number one neurosurgeon in Kansas City was on call that day. Uh, holy shit. And, uh, yeah, he came in and was like, he was so ice cold about it. Yeah. He was just like, yeah, here's what's wrong. We you need to get you in for some surgery. And I was like, you know, you're 17. Two a day started in for football started in two weeks. And like, that's all I was worried about. Yeah. And I was like, well, if I don't do the surgery, I go, if I have the surgery, can I play football? And they're like, no. And I was like, well, then let's just wait till the Because he was just so calm about it. He yeah. didn't make it seem like it was a life-threatening event. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, I was like, yeah, well, if I can't play football... I'll just wait till the end of the season. He's yeah. like, mm. he goes, you won't be here tomorrow. And I was like, and I'm out of it. And yeah. I go, yeah, I know. We'll leave. Yeah. I'll go yeah. home. Yeah. And he's like, no, 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 no. He was like, you, he's like, here's what's happening. He's like, do you notice how the knot's gone now? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, it's because the ball cracked your skull. And the blood that was the bump went back into the skull. Oh, my God. And it's starting to clot between your brain and your skull. That's the headache. And he goes, your brain is continuing to bleed. And he was like, so the brain, will, the blood will continue to clot and you will die one of the most horrific deaths ever. Holy shit. And I, I was like, and in my head, I'm like, well, then why do, are we even, why yeah, was it an option? It. Just you do should it. have just come in and said, we, we're going into surgery. Yeah, you don't need me to sign off, right? And, like, uh, just do it. He was like, I was like, oh, I didn't know. Was, I was like, yeah, well, then let's have surgery. Yeah. And, uh, and then, yeah, I had the surgery. Woke up. That had to be like five or six at night. Okay. And uh, that's about all I remember until I woke up and it was like, I just looked at the clock and it said four, you know, it's 1995. So it's still the big clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the hands. And it says four something. And I look over and my dad's sitting there reading the paper. And he, and uh, it was, I go, what's up? 
And he was like, what's up? I go, is that morning <laughs> or night? He goes, morning. And I go, the fuck are you doing here? And he was like, you're my son. <laughs> fucking, what you I'm making sure you're okay. And I was like, I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. You know, <laughs> you're just waiting. I'm like, why are you here at 4 a.m.? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so prior to that, I was already talking to the Navy. I was going to go into ROTC. Okay. Uh, and no, no inkling about no. comedy. Well, I mean, we grew up in Kansas. Yeah. Where, Where are you going to do comedy? Had yeah. no idea how to start there. Right. Like, I always compare it to, like, being a NASCAR driver. It's mm -hmm. like, what's day one of that? Right. Yeah. They, I, my next eight years were planned. Shit. It was four years of college, paid for by the Navy. Yeah. Go into, graduate college, go straight into RO, or officer training. Yeah. And then I owed the Navy, whatever, four years, five years. Yeah. And uh, and then bounce and then figure it out from there. Right. You know. But you had a solid eight. But I had a, go. I was done. Yeah. And then that disqualified me from everything. It was like this weird, you know, you're 18. How long did it take you? Because I've seen the, the, the photo, right? Yeah. So it's like it looks like over an inch wide, and it's all the way wrapped from ear to ear over your head. Well, the the stitches were an inch wide. Okay. Yeah, but it, and it went from here to here. Yeah. Uh, the stitches were in there like a normal amount of stitch time, like six weeks or okay. something. I remember going in and having them cut out, like it happened in a doctor's office. Right. Uh, from the you know the same surgeon came mm -hmm. in and. You know, you're 17 and you have hope and you're stupid and you're like, <laughs> I don't know, is it healing right? Can I, I can play football right now, oh, right? God. And he's like, fuck. And, he, oh. and he, you know, again, he was ice cold. He was like, you can play golf if you want. I'm like, what a dick thing to say. What a shitty thing to say. And he was like, we can talk about basketball when the time comes. He was like, but you'd have to wear like a thing. Yeah. And no, so and, basically you couldn't. Do any like hard to hard contacts? No, yeah. and disqualified me from the Navy completely. Like, yeah, I called the recruiter. He's like, "Yeah, no, you're done." Yeah, fuck. And uh, so now I'm like, "Well, now what?" You know, I'm gonna go to. I'm still gonna go to KU. Yeah. What they didn't tell me was that I was going to go through a very, very heavy depression. That's yeah, called. That's like super common with head injuries, right? Yeah. No yeah. one mentioned that. <gasps> I didn't know anything about it until years later. Oh my god. When I was having a beer after a show with a neurosurgeon, and I was telling him the story, and he goes, "Did you go through a heavy depression after that?" I go, "Yeah." And he was like, "Yeah, that was because of the head injury." And I was like, "Really?" Because I thought it was because I was eighteen and didn't oh, like yeah. myself. And so that was like the. I mean, that was tough. But, you know, first off, I went to the University of Kansas. I did not go to a dorm because okay. we. My mom was like, "It's the same amount." Yeah. If you want to live in an apartment. Yeah. And me and my buddy were introverts and we we're like, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. We'll be cool. We'll go out. We'll meet girls. We, had, we were, neither one of us talked to anyone when we were yeah. out ever. <laughs> we would just sit in the corner and drink like two creeps and be like, why isn't anyone talking to us? <laughs> and so that was, and he was super manic, like the highest degree of manic depressive oh, bipolar. No. Bipolar, that's what okay. it was. So he's dealing with that. I'm dealing with my stuff. And it's just this weird environment to be in. And, uh, you know, you're away from home. You're away from your friends. You're not really hanging out with anyone. Uh, it was, you know, and then you wake up every day and you're like, oh. Like, I remember waking up certain days and being like, oh, fuck, I woke up today. Uh, like you didn't want to be here. I didn't want to be around. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't know why. I was like, you know, you look around, you go to, you know, and that af that affected me going to class. Like I never went to class. Like mm -hmm. all I wanted to do was play NCAA college football and yeah. chew tobacco. And like yeah. I, I wasn't even really smoking weed yet. And then. Um, I thought that, I thought you were born with that. I thought you <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't smoke weed till my freshman year of college. Really? Which okay. I think. 
I kind of attribute to why I'm such a functional stoner. Yeah. Is like I didn't smoke pot when I was 14. Like yeah. my brain had a chance to develop. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of the kids that we went to high school that were smoking weed at 14 yeah, uh, still are. And, yeah. And, There's not a lot behind the eyes. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. How long, how long were you at KU? A semester. Okay. Two semesters. Okay. Two semesters, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then they were like, please don't come back. And I was like, that's fair. Okay. And by the, in the summer of, summer of my, after my freshman year is when I did comedy for the first time. And that's what really helped me get out of my depression. Cause it gave me an outlet. Yeah. How it, did your, your first show go great? Yeah. But I had stacked the deck un, unknowingly. Yeah. Like. 30 people from my work showed up. Yeah. And the audience right. was 50. Yeah. So, and it was the audience, you know, when they, when everyone's excited to see yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. like I headlined my first open mic unknowingly. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It's great. And so, <laughs> won the little contest that they had that night. So then they put you up on Sunday. Yeah. And in your mind, you're like, oh, this place is going to be sold out, blah, blah, blah. And the guy that was headlining was someone I'd seen on TV. It was the, um, the Incredible Wid. Or, okay. And, like, he was one of my favorites. I remember showing up and, like, six of my family members showed up and they were most of the – you're like, yeah. oh, I see what's going mm -hmm. on. Yep. And then I just ate the biggest dick. Yeah. Because uh, no one was there to see me, obviously. Yeah. And uh, so that it, it, you go from up top, from down yeah. low, real quick. But that that really started to help me get out of my depression was just having that outlet, having something to look forward to. But mainly, it was I just got tired of being sad. Yeah. At some point, I fe I feel that sadness becomes a decision, mm -hmm. and you can. And I say this to people all the time. It's like, you you know, you're given a certain situation. You can choose to look at the negatives or you can choose to look at the positives if there are any. I mean, I'm not saying be delusional. Right. And right. be like, oh, everything's great. And the world's crumbling right. behind you. Right. It's, it's like, okay, this happened and it sucks. You know, if there are no positives, then, you know, let's make a plan to figure out how to navigate this issue. And I've yeah. always found comfort in doing that. Yeah. Uh, compartmentalizing the emotions and, and having the wherewithal to, again, just set a plan. Like, how do we navigate? What's going to happen? Uh, and, that, that, and that happened with, you know, if I started to feel sad about something, if I started, right. then you catch yourself in that moment and you figure out how to do anything else but think about that. Right. You know, and, you know, weed helps. The gym helps. Yeah. Like anything helps. Yeah. Just other than. Sitting I, and thinking about it. I, yeah, I have friends that you just, you can see it happen. Yeah. As soon as the negative thought goes in their head, they just stare down this sad hole. Yep. And they just are like, and listen, in that moment, you have that, you know, you can't help your reaction, but you can help the next, you can decide what the next moment after the reaction is. Yeah. Some can. Yeah. There are some people that have a chemical imbalance that literally don't have that. Right. But I think some people, it's just not. There, it's just it's, a choice. Yeah. It's a lack of, dis or, or a lack of discipline. Yeah. Did like, you, did you ever have to get on medication? Like no, I did a, but also, or like, how bad did it get? Or yeah, maybe I, I probably should have in the in the dead of it, right. in like the like the deep winter of the depression, right? Probably should have, but also it was the late nineties, like therapy and all that stuff wasn't as in vogue or looked as you know, it wasn't as common or it wasn't as right. talked about right. in those moments, in right. that time. So, like, I never even thought about Like, I never had the thought I should talk to someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that never occurred. Did it you, was just... When did you... So that happened when you were 17. When did you feel like you were, like, coming out of a haze? Like, where you could be, like, steady, I guess. 35? 
Really? Was when it was when I started to realize you know, you have to take accountability. Yeah. And you have to make the decisions to that that was when I really figured out to choose happiness and to choose uh positivity. Because before then, like in my early thirties, it was all like even in the height of the last comic standing stuff, when everything was going so well, I was I was probably as sad as I'd been in some time. Really, and a lot of that just came from, you know, you spend the first, your you spend the you know your late teens and early twenties going, oh, if I just had money, I'd I'd be confident, I'd yeah. be fine, and I'd yeah. be happy. And then you get all this money, and then you're not. Yeah, you're still you. Yeah, you just have more money. Yeah. And then you try to go out and buy stuff because, you know, and that's what I did. I would go shopping every day and you'd come home with a shirt because it made you feel good. God, yeah. Or if a girl dumped, I mean, I went and bought a guitar because a girl dumped me. And I remember yeah. leaving the guitar, leaving the guitar center like, she can't do this. <laughs> she can't buy this guitar. I just bought this guitar. Do you still have the guitar? I still have that there guitar. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a great guitar. I've sold other guitars. Mm -hmm. Uh but uh, it's like retail therapy. Yeah, but yeah. it doesn't go. It's not. You might as well take a shot of tequila. It's equally as effective yeah. and it's cheaper. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so you, yeah. you know, through your 20s and stuff, you you don't realize that you think it's everybody else. And you think if this would happen, if this would happen. And, and eventually you get to a point where it's like everything's going, you know, it's never going to be perfect. Yeah. Uh, so you have to just enjoy w the positives of what you have in the moment. Yeah. And you also have to realize what you control in the moment. If I worry about, if I'm worried about something, if something's going on in my head or if I'm sad about something, one of the questions I ask is like, what can we do about it now? Yeah. yeah. And then you achieve, you do those things. And then you're like, okay, well, that's what I can do. And you have to take solace in that. You can't just continue to worry about the hypotheticals or what might happen. Yeah. So the from 17 to 35, since you were doing comedy, mostly through that. Yeah. Do you, because we have had a guest on before that was like, I thought if I held on to my pain, that's what made me funny. Yeah. Do you feel that way or do you think that yeah. that's not true anymore? No, I don't. I don't think that's true anymore. Just because it's not pain that leads me to my comedy anymore, as much as it's frustration with society yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the I don't. You know, ugly and angry was written from a very angry place. Yeah. I mean, that's why it's called that. Yeah. I mean, my my albums are pretty. You know, everyone like. Everyone thinks when I say ugly that I'm talking about my physical appearance and so they're always like you've, you're very attractive i'm like that's not <laughs> and also the fact that that's where you went with it shows you that i'm not very attractive uh but no it was always about the tone and the and yeah. the mindset yeah. because it was an ugly mindset it was an angry mindset yeah and then after that came lost and alone and that was yeah. I, I was both of those things it was yeah. a weird time uh it was a weird time where ugly and angry had done well but had been taken away from net, you know, Netflix didn't renew it. Yeah. And no one wanted to make Lost and Alone. Yeah. And so I had, so I went to stand up records, which I already had a relationship with. Right. And we just, and that's why it's not recorded on video. Right. So that, you know, and then a man from Kansas, like the, I shot that when I was 35, 36 and had come, it had Feels matured. Lighter. And yeah. Yeah. And so it's, and it's very much a representation of where I was at the time. Like yeah. I could, I can feel the success happening, and I can feel the maturity and uh, the positive mindset starting to those yeah. things starting. You know, because you know, even when you decide to start making choices to be positive and stuff, it's not, it's not a switch. Yeah. It's it's like anything. It's, it's like process. when you go to the gym, yeah. like the first couple of times, you're super winded and you're exhausted and and choosing positivity exhausts you after yeah. a while. Yeah. And then it just gets easier and it gets easier and then it eventually becomes instinctual. Yeah. 
And now you've got uh, There's No Money in Babies. There's No Money in Babies. Which I watched two nights ago. Thank you. Hilarious. Thank Jimmy you. John. Dude, I didn't even know about the Jimmy John thing. I yeah. never even heard of it. I'm I'm so, I'm so curious how many people that didn't know when they watch that immediately pull out their phone and look up. Oh, photo. they do it all the time. They do it all the time during the shows. I I saw Jimmy John recently in the flesh. Okay. Uh, and it not that much flesh though, right? I, no, 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 no. But I'm skeptical. Okay. It, okay. He looked similar, but it did not look. It's also like you. It's from a far away. From so far away, but it's also like. A very rich man would probably be on that boat in that situation. So yeah. that like really narrows the pool. Yeah, no, there's not a lot thing. of McDonald's employees no, out not. deep sea fishing. <laughs> and your whole bit with that. And then there was another one, oh, that I'm like, oh, this would trigger my dad. The one where it's uh traveling parents oh, the on balls. the traveling the, oh, sports gosh. leagues. So that was so this kind of ties into the next point. Um, so my dad was one of those guys that would take my brother to all of his track meets and they were traveling track meets and he, like you said, would be alone, yeah. just wanting quiet yeah. out of the hotel room, like at two o'clock in the morning where he's like, just don't talk to me. I'm like overstimulated. Just don't talk to me. Um, but one time he took my brother when I think he was, I think Brandon was 12 and they were in a hotel in Iowa and Brandon was turning around a corner and there were some kids playing as they do because they're traveling, right? And they were trying to flick um, cards, like playing cards, into a hat. And my brother crossed around at the wrong time and one lanced his eye. No way. Yeah, so dad takes him to the emergency room. And he got, now at this time, Brandon was, his whole thing was he wanted to be a pilot for the Air Force. And he was the best runner on his track team. He was, actually, I think he was older than that because he was already playing football. So he would probably been, I mean, I guess you can play, but I think he was playing high school football. Okay. So maybe 15. And uh, he wanted to be a wide receiver, even though dad wanted him to be a quarterback, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, or maybe it was the other way around. I can't remember. But they took him to the emergency room. The doctor said, yeah, you know, it's probably fine. But when you get home, make sure you go uh, to your eye doctor. Worst thing that could be said. Um, because he ended up running the track meet the next day and maybe the next day it got progressively worse swollen by the time they got home and nancy my stepmom saw it she was like what the fuck yeah we're taking him you know and they took him back in the emergency room they prepped him for surgery he needed a cornea transplant it probably could have been saved um yeah it probably could have been saved and he life before him you know he was like the super athlete in our family yeah. and uh and then all of that just kind of went away. And next thing I know, my parents who were very against video games. We're letting him play video games. And yeah. it just, it's been interesting. And now he's, uh, let's see, I'm 41. So he's probably 31, 32. And I still don't think he's recovered from a lot of that. And it's interesting how. Yeah, you have to, it's not, it's something that doesn't just happen. Yeah. You don't just wake up one day and you go, ah, I'm over that. Yeah. You have to. You know, sometimes it takes therapy. Sometimes it just takes adjusting your perspective. Mm -hmm. But you have to, some people do get stuck in the weird hole and they yeah. just never come out of it. And they sit there and they think about what might have been. And that's a choice. Yeah. You can choose not to. Yeah. And you, I mean, he's still, he's like, he's married. He has two beautiful baby girls. Yeah. And he, like, he's done a lot of that. But I think he's kind of white knuckled his way to that point where it's like, and I don't, as a family member, I don't know how to help that. And I don't yeah. know how dark it's gotten. And I know I don't know how dark it's gotten. And it's like, Oh, like, how yeah. do you help somebody? I mean, also I was that? very fortunate in to find this, like, like I really do feel like God was like, Hey man, you're going the wrong way. Yeah. I know that seems like, and that's yes. a great path to go, but also maybe you're supposed to be doing this, telling jokes in malls. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> That's a it's a better schedule. Yeah. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Uh and also I would have graduated officer school August of two thousand one. Yeah. Oof. Okay. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That would so have been a very That would have been a tough time different to different path. Yeah, because and... again, in the late nineties, when you're like, Oh, I'm gonna be in the Navy, great, I'm gonna sail the ocean, the world's fine. That's it. We're Everything's all good. great. No Next one's gonna attack know. America. Who's stupid enough to do that? Then they're like, guess what? Front lines. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, 
Oh, well, granted, I was in the Navy, so oh, yeah, unless so. I would have become like a SEAL or something, yeah. I would have been just fine. I come from a long line of Navy guys, and there was, I think Drew Lynch has a really good joke on it where he's talking about like, it's like telling, it's like a, I can't, I'm, I'm going to butcher it, so I'm not even going to try it, but like, the difference between a Marine, an Army guy, and a Navy guy. And the Navy guy is like, oh, we're just stuck on this boat all day. And I'm like, yeah. I said it to my uncle. And he was like, that's not funny because he's a Navy guy. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, that's what you think it is. But it's like, again, you just never know what's around the corner when you sign up for. Yeah, but so. Saving Private Ryan, I didn't see any Navy guys on that beach. No, it's true. Yeah. Okay, so what would you say is your medicine that helped you? If you had to pick one thing that helped you kind of heal from all that i mean is it weed stand-up comedy helped okay um i think perspective i mean it's hard to say go get perspective because it's not bottled yeah. up but yeah. like you only get one choice at this life mm -hmm. and you can either pick to be sad all the time or you can pick to be happy all the time yeah. and and to be honest with you the rest of the world doesn't give a shit yeah. which one you choose yeah it's really up to you yeah and you know, it's a choice you have to make every day. And it's sometimes a choice you have to make multiple times a day. Yeah. Um, and weed does help sometimes. Yeah. Um, but also moderation of everything helps. So yeah. like, I'm not saying. Cause you also do CrossFit and stuff like that. Yeah. CrossFit helps. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm always looking for a way to feel better. That isn't, you know, yeah. You don't have to buy through it from a guy. Right. You know, like right. I mean, I tried cold plunges. Yep. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you, man. Experiment failed. <laughs> like not everything's for everybody. The morning showers and stuff. I think I did that for like two weeks and I was like, this is a not helping. And I'm, it's making me angry. <laughs> it's making me so fucking angry. Uh, yeah. But the the pers like I jumped out of an airplane. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, how to, was that? That was great. Yeah. Uh, would you do it again? Yeah, 100%. Oh, but okay. But I, I would only do So I did it with the Army. Okay. Uh, that's who I would want to yeah, do it with. Yeah, with guys that, like, normally jump out of, into stadiums yes. and shit. Like, yeah. I did it with that guy. Yeah. I didn't do it with They're a... They're like, we're not doing this recreationally. This yeah. is like... No, yeah. no one here has dreadlocks. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so... Uh, and now that guy has since retired. Okay. But we're still friends. Yeah. Uh, maybe one of the drunkest I've ever been was with that guy. Okay. Uh, not when we jumped. Oh, fortunately. Oh, okay. I was gonna say uh, that's. But uh, and now he jumps professionally. Yeah. I would jump with that guy again. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not jumping with you know Ross to Steve. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I thought it would uh, alleviate my fear of open heights. Okay. And it it didn't. No. no, 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 I have that fear too. I did the. Uh, do you remember uh, Worlds of Fun? They had the rip cord. Yes. Yeah, I did that, and I I did it with a cousin on each side, two guy cousins on each side, and I was like, this was this. Oh, uh, I will throw up. I did that with Andy, my sister. Did you? She they so. Did she she get? She had it. the rip cord. <gasps> so she, they pull us up. And we're about to where I think we're supposed to go. And then you look back. And I'm like, why are we still going up? And I look, we're not even halfway there. I thought we were a third of the way there. And I look back and I was like, are you joking me? And so we get up to the top and you know, you're like this. Yeah. And Andy's just giggling. And I go, and I'm mad. I'm oh like, Andy, God. you pull that fucking ripcord. I swear to God, I'll fucking murder you. <laughs> and she, you just hear her giggle and rip the cord. And I, I remember having this thought distinctly. <laughs> How is Andy screaming and laughing at the same time? <laughs> I can see her doing it. I can actually hear it. She is not screaming. I'm the one that's screaming like a little girl. <laughs> She's laughing at me. She does not have the ability to make two voices at the same time. It's it is me, and I am, and she's dying laughing. Oh God! And I'll. She brings that up all the time. She was like, "You mother." Did. But uh, and it was one of those when I jumped out of the airplane. You know, you're attached to him, and right before, first off, I'm the first guy out of our flight, which means I am in front of the door that you jump out of. Okay. Fun fact, first 2,000 feet of the flight, the door is open because there's no cooling system in the plane. 
Yeah. So I'm just staring out an open window and this seatbelt is not a regular seatbelt. Yeah. It's like this weird like thing that goes in like this. Yeah. And I'm not a hundred percent. I've never figured it out. And so I don't know if my seatbelt's connected. Right. It looks like it is. Right. I am white knuckling this bar. Oh my God. So hard. So finally we get up to, so they close it and then I'm fine. And then we get up to altitude and I look over at dude. I was like, so what do I do? He was like, I got to do, it was like three, two, one jump. He's like, you don't have to do anything. He's like, you just hold on. I will, I will do all the things. And I'm like, okay. And it's oh literally God. I'm gonna throw up. me okay. being as scared as I've ever been ever yeah to the happiest i've ever been in about a second and a half really yeah it is literally you jump because you have to realize you have no frame of reference as far as you're falling right so it feels like you're flying yeah and you're just flying and meanwhile there's a guy in a squirrel suit whipping around you filming the whole thing and so that's super surreal and, uh, and oh wait, that's I th I have seen the video. I think you did you post yeah it on I posted the, yeah, the video okay, yeah, yeah yeah now that sounds funny. but no and it was just like the most incredible thing you you free fall for almost a minute and then you land and then you get to control the thing and then uh, and then you land and uh, yeah it was it was the coolest but yeah you just I'm just always looking for stuff like that to get that dopamine rush to just yeah say I did you know go out and do stuff go say out, you lived yeah yeah. yeah. There's, you know, it's, you can sit at home and drink beer and smoke weed every day. Yeah. And I do it a lot of days. <laughs> but on the days where I can find something better to do or some event. Yeah. You know, I go do that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm rarely home. Yeah. Because I'm out. You know, it's fun to have friends that have money and a lot of free time. Yeah. And I've kind of gotten myself into that situation. So it's like. Those are the friends you want. Those yeah. are, hey, I'll see you in Phoenix. Yeah. Okay, great. There's, uh, when we did the record too, it was like, they're like, okay, three, two. I can't remember if there was an announcer that did it or they were like, do the three, two, one countdown. And he pulled on two. And I, I, I screamed fuck all the, I was I was probably 16 fuck all the way down and they, I remember Nancy was so because she signed the permission right because I was yeah. too young or whatever and she was like if anything happens your mother will kill me and I was like yeah she will yeah, she will she'll yeah, definitely yeah. fucking kill you uh yeah that's but it is it is a dopamine thing I still don't think I could do that again I thought about that but. uh and another thing is uh don't be afraid to shed friends yeah like if you're like I've definitely been in a like, I've had friends that are around me that were kind of miserable, but all, more so they were upset with you when you were successful. Or, oh, that's awful. Yeah, yeah. And you just, you know, friendship's a two-way street. And yeah. if those people bring you down and you're always the guy that's building back up, like, you only owe them so much of your time. Yeah. And so I'm friends with a lot of the people that I've been friends with, with since I was 12. Yeah. But I'm also not friends with some people that, just our lives went different ways yeah. and you know i didn't feel f it wasn't fun to hang out with them anymore yeah and again it comes down to you go through life once man who wants to spend it with a bunch of people who are going to tell you how much shit sucks all the time yeah that are i think also people that just don't change now if they're already, like yeah. if they're already like cool and normal and everything but if they're going through the same shit they've been going through for like 10 20 30 years yeah and not getting better, but you're getting healthier and happier, it's hard to be around those people. It now. really is. And you're like, well, man, you should try this. And they're like, yeah. The moment one thing goes wrong with that plan, they're like, well, yes. it didn't work. Yeah. It, you fucked yes. me. And you're yeah. like, no, man, no plan's perfect. You just gotta keep, keep trying. trying. And they're like, no, no. Yeah. It's either fucking all the way or nothing. Yeah. Like, well, I literally have like four people in my head when you're saying that. Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's it. Yeah. So, okay, after getting hit in the head with a golf ball at 17 and having uh, major brain surgery, what is the funniest lesson that you've learned? You know, it's kind of like that, uh, it's that boxing thing where it's like a plan's a great plan until you get hit in the face. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then you got to figure it out from there. Yeah. And that's life, baby. Yeah. You know, yeah. You got a great plan, and then all of a sudden you get hit with a golf ball, and that plan don't work anymore. Yeah. So you got to figure something else Pivot. out. Pivot. And you know, I thought I was gonna be a businessman, 
and I was going to travel around and sell stuff like my dad did and have a finished basement with a bar in it yeah. and a man cave oh, and a every, dog. Yes. And I don't have any of that shit. Yeah. And I'm super happy. Yeah. Do I, are there moments in my life where you think, man, life would have been a lot simpler if I didn't do comedy yeah. and I did, yeah. and I was home 300 days a year yeah. and had a normal nuclear family. Like, yeah. Would have been a fun, would I have been as, you know, words fail me, but would I, you know, would I be- But you, a, like, your life experiences are, like, yeah. insane. Like, the one where, the the one with Andy and the prom dress and, and the- Hanging out with Mufford and Sons and Verlander, like- Like, in your parents' house. That's and those insane. are just the ones I can say into a microphone. Yeah. Like, you know, there have been weird nights and, uh, and crazy nights yeah. that- would have never happened if it wasn't for weed, comedy, yeah. and getting hit in that with a golf ball. Yeah. And like, you know, you think about that when you're doing, you know, I was just smoking a joint with Jelly Roll in the back of the Ryman Theater. <laughs> like, do you understand that? And I then, just want to take that clip right there. <laughs> and, and we're sitting there and we're just holding court and I'm already having a great night. And then he looks at me and he goes, do you realize Waylon and Willie used to hang back here too? Yeah, and smoke a joint dude. and walk into that honky tonk? That's so crazy. You know, it's like these, you know, it's so nuts. And it, I, like, that's a life you don't get to lead. If you're in insurance. Yeah. No. Yeah. And yeah. so it's, you know, you just got to, you can't force it. I yeah. mean, that doesn't mean that you can't, you shouldn't be hard hit, you know, a little bit hard headed and, and persevere at moments. But yeah. man, if you can't sing, the band ain't gonna make it. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. And also, it's like, if you're not happy doing whatever it is you wanna do, or yeah. what, what it, doing what it is you're doing currently, it's never too late to figure something else out. It's gonna suck. Yeah. And it's gonna suck for a while, but it could get really good really on good. the back end. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Anything else you wanna share? I'm trying to think of Kansas City stuff. Uh, Have you ever done Big Slick? Would you ever do Big Slick? I've begged to do Big Slick. I really? literally, when I had a manager, my last manager, he was like, what are your goals? Big Slick. Yeah. He was like. My friend get, Heidi's fucking hosting it this year. I'm Heidi like, from SNL. I'm, I'm like, like oh. yo, man, there's this fucking softball game at Cough. I was like. And the, it wouldn't make me upset about it, except for the comics they have have no Kansas. They're no eight, ties. They don't move the numbers I have, and they have no ties. Yeah. And I'm just, they're just, they know someone. I've always wondered how you haven't done that. I, yeah, we And it'll that, be one of those it. things that eventually when I do it, it'll be fine. I did get to do the MLB Network last week. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, and like the PR, the Royals PR guy started following me on Twitter and stuff. Oh, it's gotta happen. And then... And then this year, I, I'm i fucking, uh, they don't know this, but uh, I'm going to book us. That's why I was asking if you were going to be in town. I'm going to get a suite on the yeah. 29th yeah. at Kaufman. Yeah. And fucking, you know, they put your, whatever group's name, it's going to yeah. say fucking comedian Chris Porter. Oh, yeah. my God. And uh, I will fly in for that. That's so, good. but, uh, yeah, um, I'm just waiting for it to go on sale. Yeah. Like, they're. They're pushing sweets really hard, which means I know they're not moving them. Yeah. And last year they had a sweet sale, and I'm just gonna yeah. fucking. Well, there's the Joy from Kansas City Barbecue. She runs a, she has you know the box seats at the Royals or whatever. Yeah. Or no, the Chiefs. And she's like, yeah, sometimes we go to. So she's like, so if you ever, and I was like, oh, Chris Porter, because you plugged Joe's KC on Segura. Oh, okay. And so I was like. Oh, he's actually going to be on mine. We'll plug it too. And she's like, "Oh, great! Well, if you guys ever want to come see a Chiefs game," and I was like, <laughs> well, yeah, "Yeah, let's go." If you guys like this episode as much as I did, don't forget to follow us on at the Funny Thing Is Podcast on all socials or NicoleComedy.com. And as always, follow, like, and subscribe. Thank you.